Good morning, good afternoon. My name is Juan Els. I'm a senior system engineer from SUSE. And today I'm going to talk to you about SUSE Manager and the cool features you can look forward to in using this amazing platform. So what is the new features within SUSE Manager? It's best in class open source infrastructure management solution that can actually manage anything from physical to virtual to cloud instances. It can optimize operations while reducing costs, reduce complexity, and make sure that you're compliant to a complete infrastructure wherever you deploy your systems. We've got a process with asset management, redeployment, workload optimization, configuration management, and patch management. So how do we resolve these issues for you? By lowering costs and simplifies management is a very simple way to use SALT. And SALT can actually have configuration management for all your systems. That they can stay in a certain state. We actually help you by building out virtual machines within SUSE Manager to make sure that it's optimized for the solution that you want to build out. Increased availability and visibility actually gives you a complete suite of making sure availability and visibility from where you are, what you're doing, and how you're building out your infrastructure by monitoring these alerts by if there's a, a vulnerability out there that you can quickly react on to it and make sure that your systems are patched. We actually have a monitoring tool with Grafana and Prometheus, which I can, which I will talk to you briefly about in one of the slides that you can have a nice dashboard of how those systems are being monitored. And reduce complexity by regaining control out of multiple operating systems. For example, if you want to manage Ubuntu, CentOS, OpenSUSE, and even that most precious of SLES and OpenSUSE. So I'm going to talk to you about four components of content lifecycle, monitoring, SLES for SAP, and virtual machine management. So what is lifecycle management? Lifecycle management gives your programmers a process to make sure that from your dev, QA, and prod, it's a seamless process to make sure that whatever you develop goes in a smooth process right through your, your, your complete CIDC stack. Now, how do you do that? Let me show you. Let's say, for example, you've got a couple of web servers. These web servers need to have code injected into them, but how do you do that? Lots of times you have to recompile the code, but here you don't have to. So what you do is you build a channel, you align the channels with what you want to build out. You have a development environment. You say, this is what I want to have. What is your QA to make sure that recommendations in your development is working 100%? And then from QA, you push it straight into production. It's a very simple process, and your developers would love this. And there you have it, from a dev to a QA to a production environment, and here you have a complete cloning of the channels that you can inject your code straight into different environments. But let's say, for example, you want to look at how these things are operating. This is giving you a process to give you a complete dashboard of where your systems are, are, are running and how they're behaving. So from this picture, you can see that you've got a data store, you've got some VMs, you've got some cluster CPUs, you have got your cluster RAM, and this gives you a plethora of different components of how you can manage your infrastructure. But from this, of course, we're talking about clustering. Now, I've mentioned to you previously of what the formulas are all about. Now, in the formulas, now, you can actually build it out very seamless. So as you can see from the left to the right, you have a machine. You want to inject onto uh, SAP. Let's say, for example, SAP needs the four-node four cluster. How do you build it? Previously, you have to go and do things, lots of manual tasks, but here you can actually do it very simple. What you do is you go onto the node, what you want to start building out, and you click on formulas. And in the formulas, you say, I want to have a cluster. In the cluster, you give it a name, the node name, if it's unicast, multicast, the network device that you want to have, the NTPT tool, your watchdog rules, and there you have it, even your SPD. Your SPD is your split brain detection of defining how the cluster should behave. So one of the new features within Susan Manager is visualization management. 
What we are trying to do is to give you a console that you can actually manage your environment of patching, configuration management, and then also building out your virtualization platforms as and when you need to. So what I'm going to show you now is a little demo of how you can actually create and modify virtual machines within a flight in the UI. Enjoy the demo. So you're with the demo. What I want to show you is how easy it is to use SUSE Manager Virtualization Management and how simple it is to actually build a VM. First and foremost, when you log on, you go to System. You look at the environment that you want to manage it in. You click on the machine that's got KVM installed and configured. You click on the Virtualization tab. And then you've got all your systems that's currently running or stopped or is provisioned. What we'll do is we create a virtual guest. We give it a name and we're going to call this one slash demo. We specify the URL where we've got the image that we want to select from. And we click on create. Once the create button has been selected, you will see that in the background, libvirt will configure the system with its networking components and disk type. And there you see it. The system is configured and it will be starting now. Then we can click on this graphical console that you can see that the system is logging on. It will go through the process of looking at Wicked, DHCP configuration, or your static configuration of your system. And there we go. Now we're going to log on. And now I'm going to add a disk to the system. As you can see, we've only got one system disk type. What we'll do now is we'll go into edit that system. Now we're going to add another disk to it. And it's simple as clicking this plus button. There you've got a disk type, file, default, And we just go and we say update. Once we've updated the system in the background, Libvirt will start converting the machine so that it can add another disk to the environment. And there you can see we've got VDB configured. Now you can start adding it to your LVM configuration or as normal static disks. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation. I'm hoping that it was very informative and then you can use it. If you need to have more information from, from us, please contact anybody within your uh, group or your AEs or contact us on SUSE.com. And then from there, let's see if we can help you. Thank you very much and enjoy your day.